Parametric simulations assume that data follows a Gaussian distribution. To check this, we create a histogram for the parameter we want to simulate. If data structure is not normal, we transform it into Gaussian. For sequential Gaussian simulation we need to determine an accurate ellipsoid. Without right dimensions the interpolation will use too few or too many data points. The size of the ellipsoid we can read from the variograms. The variogram with the longest range determines the major axis. The shortest range is the minor axis. To construct variograms, specify the lag distance, tolerance, direction, and bandwidth. The parameters for transformed data are similar. Only SIL will reflect the standardized variance, usually a value of 1. SGS will create multiple scenarios which need to be transformed back to the original domain. With SGEMS transforming the results to the original domain is problematic. The software however includes direct sequential simulation. An algorithm carries out sequential Gaussian simulation for every data. Even when the data structure is not Gaussian there is no need to transform it. All we need to do is to build variograms to set up the ellipsoid. When we know the variogram range we can set up the ellipsoid. The final step is to run the simulation. One of methods of quantifying uncertainty of geostatistical simulations is quantile analysis. It helps to understand what is the range of possible outcomes. It also gives the likelihood of extreme values. Common quantiles are the 5th, 50th, and 95th percentiles. The 0.05 quantile is the value below which only 5% of the simulated surfaces fall. In context of topography simulation it indicates less common or extreme low elevations. 0.95 quantile shows the threshold below which 95% of the surfaces fall. This highlights higher, less frequent elevations. The median divides it into two equal halves and offers a reliable measure of central tendency. It is robust against outliers and provides a typical representation of the topography. Median is reliable for understanding the central tendency. The other two give the range of outcomes. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know if anything seems not clear and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.